where we left off last time is we had been talking about De Morgan's laws and equivalent statements. So before we get going, just remind me, in general, how do we know if two statements are equivalent? How did we determine equivalence? Anybody remember? Perfect. The results on the truth table are exactly the same. And the first thing that we did in this section last time is I gave you two statements uh, and we did the truth table to determine if they're equi they equivalent, and they were. Then I defined for you De Morgan's laws, which were like a distributive property for the, the squiggly, for the negation. And then the last thing we did is we verified one of De Morgan's laws using a truth table. Okay, so we twice now we have done used a truth table to determine statements equivalence. So what we're going to kind of spend the rest of this section doing is talking about uh, some equivalences that we can take advantage of without doing a truth table. And the first one is De Morgan's law. So what we're going to do is this problem right here. We are going to right about here. Okay, we are going to use De Morgan's laws. We're going to use De Morgan's laws or one of them to write a statement that is equivalent to this. So I don't know if you have your notes and if you still have De Morgan's laws visible. If not, we'll put we'll, we'll put them on the board in a minute as we as we go through this problem. And then I've got two problems for you that are the same ilk. And so this is just a problem I have in my book. It says the prop the dog was not a bulldog. And the dog was not a boxer. Dog was not a bulldog and the dog was not a boxer. So we are going to use De Morgan's laws in order to take this statement and write its grammatical equivalent uh, that would have the same logical conclusion. I'm just giving you a moment to write this down because I know I just threw a lot of words on the board. I want to make sure you get it. I got a couple worksheets to make our writing lives a little easier for the rest of this section. So this is a problem you're going to encounter a bunch of. This is probably the most common type of problem in this section, whether it's with De Morgan's laws or one of our other two equivalences, is going to be taking a grammatical statement and writing its equivalent. So here's how you're going to do this every time. Step one, okay, we've, we've already seen this. We're getting closer and closer to doing an argument, which we're going to start arguments today. Uh, we're getting closer to that. Step one is to define your simple statements. So I've got, I need to define a statement P, and I'm going to need to define a statement Q. Somebody help me, or everybody help me, that's fine. What should we define statement P to be? The dog was a bulldog. Now, I'll remind you of this one thing, please. Simple statements are always defined positive. So this not right here, you're saying, where did that go? Well, we're going to throw that in with a squiggly when we write it down symbolically. Okay, so the simple statements are always positive. What should we define a simple statement Q to be? The dog was a boxer. That's step one, right? Define your simple statements. Doing that makes your life easier, okay? Step two is I'm going to take the statement that I was given. I'm going to write it symbolically. Okay, I can do that. Well, the dog was not a bulldog. What is that symbolically? Okay, P and a squiggly. So I'm gonna put the squiggly first. Squiggly P. Okay, the P, remember statement P is the dog was the bulldog. The squiggly says not. The word and, that's my perfect, good symbol. We've got the V or the upside down V, the carrot. 
And the dog was not a boxer. That is what symbol? Okay, so if you have it in your notes, okay, look in your notes, or maybe you remember, because we just started the homework. According to De Morgan's Law, now this is our shortcut. Okay, this is taking advantage of what we've already been given. This, in De Morgan's Laws, is what we had when we distributed, quote unquote, distributed the squid weight. So what, it, what from what we talked about last time is this equivalent to? Anybody remember? Anybody look it up? Okay, we're gonna have a squiggly and then parentheses, yes. Okay, so when we take, what we're doing is we're taking the squiggly outside. So when I do that, there's no longer a squiggly in front of the P. The big thing about De Morgan's Law, it says, yeah, you can distribute the negation, you just gotta remember to flip the sign. And if it's a conjunction, you make it a disjunction and vice versa. So instead of a instead of a carrot, I'm going to make it a B for the disjunction. And now there's no squiggly in front of the Q, so it's just a plain old Q. This is one of the two De Morgan's laws. This was already in your notes. If you weren't here last time, write this down. This is one of two De Morgan's laws. The other one, in case you weren't here last time, the other one is squiggly. And instead of P or Q, I've got P and Q. And that's equivalent to squiggly P, and then I change the and to an or squiggly P. So if you were here last time, that's already in your notes. If you weren't here last time, that's where we stopped, was defining what the two De Morgan's laws are. Step one, we defined our simple statement. Step two, we, uh, we wrote the statement that I was given symbolically. Step three, this was just De Morgan's laws. And then the final thing, this is the answer to the question. We're going to write this in words, okay, and that will be the equivalent, logically equivalent. Mentioned this back at section one, when you have a squiggly in front of your parentheses, how do you, how do you start out your statement? Anybody remember that? No, I'm not writing this about what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm going to write it in words. Okay, we've already applied the De Morgan's laws. Okay. Perfect, yes. This right here, if you see a squiggly, out in front of parentheses, that means you start off with the words, it is false that, or it is not true that. You prefer those words, it doesn't matter. It is false that, or it is not true that. So the words, it is false that, represent this squiggly in the parentheses. Okay? It's saying everything that comes after this is, is false. And so now P or Q. So P is the dog or the boxer. Time to look at myself on the camera and see where I was and go now. The dog was a boxer, or the dog. No, sorry, I got the wrong dog. Too many dogs. Bulldog was the first dog, or that statement there has the same logical meaning as. The statement that we were given at the very beginning. That's the answer to the problem. When you came in, I gave you two sheets. One of the sheets has at the very top, it says rewrite using De Morgan's laws. And there's the number one and there's a sentence and there's number two in a sentence. I'm going to put it on the screen for you and I'm going to put it on the screen for anybody watching the video. I would like you to do this same process for problem number one. Problem number
All right, here we go. Had a little issue. I'm trying to get this to look better on the screen. I don't know why I can't get it to focus when I when I'm projecting it. So my apologies if you're watching it, but uh, you can also have your sheet. Okay, so this first one says the sun is not shining, but it is raining. So step one, I have to define my simple statement. So simple statement P, simple statement Q. So remember, we define our simple statements positively. So simple statement P is going to be the sun is shining. Simple statement Q is going to be it is raining. If you have any questions as I'm going through this, if you did something different or you don't understand why I'm doing something, that is a beautiful time to ask a question. Step two is I'm going to write the statement that I am given symbolically. So the sun is not shining is squiggly P. But if you remember uh, a long time ago, I just want to put this in the example just to keep it fresh in your mind. But is also the conjunction. It's the same as and. Okay, I mentioned that on the first day. And I know the book does it sometimes. And I just didn't want you to forget. That's why it's in my example. And then it is raining. So that's Q. Now I'm going to use De Morgan's law. I'm going to use De Morgan's law to pull out the squiggly, and I'm going to write it in some parentheses. Now this example is a touch different than the previous one. That's why we're doing it. So if you didn't quite get this, that's okay. When I take out the negation out of the squiggly P, what is left? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Just the P is positive. Perfect. Yes. And then we're going to change the and, the conjunction, to an or, so it becomes an or. Now, this is the one that's a little different. This is already a positive Q. When I take the squiggly out, when I take the negation out, what is left? It's a negative Q. If you think about it in arithmetic, if you, uh, what's a negative times a negative make in arithmetic? A positive. So the same thing's going here. If I was thinking about redistributing, a negative times the negative Q would be a positive Q. Okay, so if you didn't get that, you didn't know that, I totally understand. That's why I made it part of my example. And now I'm gonna write that statement uh, grammatically. So once again, this squiggly out in front says it is false that. The statement P is the sun is shining. Or it is not raining. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. It's the same sort of principle as in arithmetic. If I am factoring out the negative, so to speak, then what I've done is I've taken the negative from in front of the P and the becomes positive. And then this Q is already positive. So when I factor out this squiggly, that means there must be a negative because a negative times a negative would make a positive. So we're just thinking about this in reverse. Okay, great job. All right, let's do one more just because I think this is, in my mind, the hardest thing of the day. So I would like you to do the same thing on problem two. Write an equivalent statement to it is false that I did not pass the test or I studied too much. You can never study too much. Though. Let's be real.
I'm gonna get going with the same process. So if you're still in process, keep working. First thing I'm going to do is define my simple statement. So my original compound statement is, it is false that I did not pass the test or I studied too much. So the statement P is going to be based on this first part. That is, I did not pass the test and we always define our simple statements in the positive. So statement P is, I did pass the test. Statement Q is gonna be based on the second part. I studied too much, that is already positive, so we will leave it. There's my simple statements defined. Now what I'm going to do is write the statement that I was given symbolically. So it starts off with the words, it is false that. As we've seen this morning, the words, it is false that means I have a squiggly and then some parentheses. That's always what it means. So a squiggly and then some parentheses. I did not pass the test is squiggly P. The word or is the V, the disjunction. And then I studied too much is statement Q. That's what I was given. Now I'm gonna use De Morgan's laws, which are in your notes or we've already written on the board. So I'm gonna use it. I am distributing the negation. Okay, so here we go, help me out. If I'm distributing the negation, a negation a neg of a negation, a negative times a negative, what's the first term going to be? Positive P, yep. De Morgan's law said you always just, when you do this distributing, you flip the, you flip the connective between it. So instead of the disjunction, instead of an or statement, it's going to be a and statement. And then when I take the squiggly times Q, Q is positive. So a negative times a positive is going to be a what? A negative Q, squiggly Q. And then the last little bit is to take that and write it in words. And so when I write that in words, statement P is I did pass the test. And, and then squiggly Q is I didn't study too much. Okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna slide down to the bottom. That's De Morgan's laws. We've talked about them pretty extensively. Just to recap where we are, because I want you feeling current. The first thing we talked about in this section at the end of class last time was what makes two statements equivalent is if their truth tables identical. And then I defined for you De Morgan's law, which is just an equivalence that we already know. This, so that's our first equivalence that we can take for granted. We don't have to prove it, we're given it. The second equivalence is gonna be based on our conditional statement. So we've got a conditional statement. There are three other statements related to it and we are going to look at their truth values in a minute. One's called the converse, one called, called the inverse. The other's called, this is a great math word, the contrapositive. Woohoo! So first thing we're gonna do is just to get used to these things is we're gonna take two really short, simple statements. These are the shortest simple statements I could think of. And we are gonna write the conditional, the converse, the inverse and the contrapositive. So if statement P is it rains and statement Q is I get wet, then here is my conditional statement. Well, tell me, P arrow Q. What would P arrow Q be in words given those statements? Perfect, if it rains, then I get wet. Fantastic. Anybody got a question, comment, or concern about putting P arrow Q into words right there? Well then do me this favor, make your best hypothesis then at what you think the converse is going to be, Q arrow P. What's Q arrow P? All right, if I get wet. 
then it is raining or then it rains just to keep the, now notice, okay, so this is important to notice. My conditional statement P, this is the original statement. The converse structurally is what you get when you just change the order of the terms. Okay. So if you need to make a note to yourself of how to remember this, the converse is just you change the order. Oops, I don't know how I'm, I'm spelling ogre. There we go. I changed the order. So instead of P being first, then Q, it's Q's first, then P. Okay, give your best hypothesis to writing the inverse. Notice on the inverse, we take our original conditional statement. We've not changed the order in the inverse. What we've done is we've changed the, the, the truth values. So instead of if P, then Q, it's if squiggly P, then squiggly Q. Write that in words, please. So the inverse is if what? If it does not rain or if it's not raining, yes. Then I don't get wet. Great. So the converse, you simply change the order. The inverse, you simply change the sign. The last one, the contrapositive, you do both of those things. So notice on the contrapositive, when I compare, compare it to the original conditional statement, the contrapositive, I have changed the order and I've changed the signs. So write that in words, please. So the contrapositive, I've changed the order and I changed the sign. So it starts off, if what? If I don't get wet, then it did not rain or it does not rain or it's not raining, whatever. Perfect. Well, what it turns out then is that one of these statements is equivalent to the original conditional statement. And, and figure out right now. So So which statement is equivalent to the conditional? So we are gonna figure this out together. You are going to help me. We are gonna make a truth table. Okay, so start a new line in your notes. It's gonna be a nice long truth table because we've got four statements that we need to figure out. Now, the good news is that we each only has two simple statements. So I only need four rows on my truth table. And here's my typical order of trues and falses. By the way, I don't know if it helped you or not, but I printed out more of the basic sheets. If you want to keep practicing, you know, put 30 seconds on the timer on your phone and see how fast you can fill these in and, and, and do it so that you can get really good. If you can remember the, the, the five simple statements, then there's nothing on truth tables I can do to, to trip you. So here's what I would like you to do, please. I would first like you to fill in the truth values for the conditional statement. If P, then Q. 20 seconds to do that. The conditional statement, P, then Q. Very bad. 
That's a great question. I don't have all the homework problems memorized. It's been a while. I try to keep the homework fair, though. All right, so the truth table for the conditional, this is the one you should have this one in the bag. It's one of our five basic truth uh, statements. So if true, then true, what is that? Yep. If true, then false, what's that? That's the false one. Remember, you met the condition, you got the 90, but you didn't get the A, okay? And then these two, since they start off false, what's the truth value of both of these statements? True, okay. Here's what I would like you to do. Now I would like you to do, because we're trying to see which ones are equivalent, I want you to do the truth values for the converse. Remember the converse is I'm just changing the order. I'm going if Q then P, so I'm going backwards on the truth table or on my, on my columns. So now I'm going backwards. I'm turning my columns around. Remember, the, the conditional statement is the only one that order matters. Okay, the other ones, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. So I'm going backwards. I'm going this way from Q to P. So true, then true is true, good. False, then true is true, then false is that's the false one. Great job, everybody. And then last one, false, then false. So, so far, are the conditional and converse equivalent statements? No. Remember, everything has to be identical. And even though they have the same number of trues and falses, they are in a different order. So those are not equivalent. So we have not found which one is equivalent to the conditional. So in preparation for the inverse and the contrapositive, do a column real quick for me for squiggly P and squiggly Q. The negation just changes our truth values. So instead of the P column being TTFF, -F, it's going to be FFTT. -T. Squiggly Q is going to be F and T, F and T. There we go. Now, we, we need a column for the inverse. If you look on your notes, I told you the inverse. You don't change the order of the statements, you negate them. So the conditional statement was P then Q. So now we've got squiggly P then squiggly Q. So go ahead and determine the truth outcomes for that. All right, so the inverse is squiggly P then squiggly Q. So I'm just going in this order on these. So false then false is yep. false then true is yep. true then false and then true then true. Is the inverse equivalent to my original conditional statement? Is it TFTT? Yeah. Nope. So the last one to try, hopefully there's one, I promise there was. The contrapositive, which says change the order and change the sign. So squiggly Q, then squiggly P. So go ahead and see what that is, and then we will answer our question.
On my columns now, I'm going backwards from the squiggly D, squiggly Q. So I've got false, then false. I've got true, then false. False, then true. And then true, then true. All right, at long last, is the contrapositive equivalent to the conditional statement? Yes. So notice we've got the same order of trues and falses. So what that means for us is this. So this is the summary. I just wanted to practice truth tables. I just wanted to remind you about what equivalence means. And so here's the summary. My conditional statement, if P then Q, is equivalent to what I get if I do two things, if I flip the order of the statements and also if I change the signs of the statements. So squiggly Q, then squiggly P. That's called the contrapositive. As a side note, you don't need to remember this, but the converse and inverse, they are equivalent because they turn out to be contrapositives of each other. Notice to get from the converse to the inverse, what have we done? We've switched the order of the statements and we've also switched the signs and that's why they are uh, equivalent to each other. All right, so here's the, uh, we got an example of this, then we'll get to the last equivalence and then uh, we'll be done with this section. So this is a problem that I have in the book. I'm gonna write it down. <clears throat> what we're doing here is the same sort of thing we did with those De Morgan's Laws problems. I'm gonna write a statement on the board and I want you to rewrite it using the contrapositive. Okay, I want you to rewrite the equivalent statement to this conditional statement. Okay, so the instruction is rewrite the equivalent to the given conditional statement. And the conditional statement that I have picked is if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Then the opposite sides are parallel. So like you did for De Morgan's laws, define your simple statements and then rewrite and finish up the problem.
Okay, so here we go. First thing, write simple statements. So statement P is the quadrilateral as a parallelogram. Statement Q, the opposite sides are parallel. So written symbolically, this given statement is if P then Q. The reason I want you to write this out symbolically is just in case there's a squiggly involved in there. It helps to keep things straight. I understand at some point you're going to get good enough at this that you don't need to write this symbolically. You can do the contrapositive in your head. I totally get that. Okay, but the first couple, I would recommend writing this down. So the contrapositive of this, when I've changed the signs and I flip the order, is squiggly Q, then squiggly P. And now I will write that in words. And when I write that in words, it says if the opposite sides, since there's a squiggly, are not parallel, Then the quadrilateral is not a parallelogram. Okay, one more bit from this section. You're almost done with section 3.4. So the first equivalence that you can take to the bank, you can assume it, you don't have to prove it, is De Morgan's laws. The second equivalence you can take to the bank, you don't ever have to prove this, you can use it, is the conditional statements equivalence to the contrapositive. And the last of our equivalences that we are just going to take for granted, we don't have to ever worry about uh, declaring them there this is this is given this is the conditional written as a disjunction Conditional statement is if p then q and it's going to be equivalent to the following I'm going to give you a moment to catch up because this uh, this is pretty much the last little bit, and then we're going to just do an example, and then we're going to be good to go here. So the conditional statement, it turns out, is equivalent to the following. Okay, it's equivalent to the following disjunction. What you do first is whatever the condition is, you make it negative. So squiggly P. The condition becomes the opposite. Or, and then you leave the conclusion or the, uh, the, the consequence alone. Okay, so you don't do anything to the consequence. So when you're writing the conditional as a disjunction, you change the sign of whatever the sign is, you change the sign on the condition, and then you leave the consequence alone. And that's equivalence between those two things right there. So the last thing that we are going to do together from this section is I gave you two sheets when you walked in, or if you're watching the video, there were two sheets that you could print off for this section. And so turn your attention to the second one please. Notice on this problem, I have already defined the simple statements for you to save us a little time. What we're going to do is we are going to determine which of the following three statements are equivalent to the given statement. The given statement where my finger is right below the simple statements is it is not true that x is greater than zero and x is negative. So here's what I would like you to do, please. I would like you, let's not worry about what's equivalent to what here. I would like you to write all four statements symbolically given these two simple statements. P is X is greater than zero and Q is X is neg negative. So write all four statements symbolically from that.
I'm sorry? Just right underneath each statement, uh, write it symbolically, right. yes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the equivalences we know to determine which, if any, of those are equivalent. Sorry. You could, yes, if you blank on the test on what the uh, what the equivalences that are given are, you can do a truth table, definitely. But I'm showing you this just to save a little time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Compare yours with mine. So statement P is X is greater than zero. Statement Q is X is negative. So the given statement says it is not true that. Well, that's the same thing as saying it is false that. So that means I've got a squiggly. And I'll put some parentheses. X is greater than zero. That is simply statement P. And X is negative. That is statement Q. Okay, so that is the given statement written symbolically. Statement one says, if X is not negative, so it's an if then statement. So I'm gonna put an arrow. If X is not negative, X being not negative, that is the opposite of statement Q. So squiggly Q, that's not a great looking Q. Let me try again, better then X is not greater than zero. Well, that is the opposite of statement P. So that is squiggly P. Statement two, X is not greater than zero. Well, statement P is X is greater than zero. So that would be squiggly P. Or that's a disjunction. X is not negative. So that's squiggly Q. It's the opposite of Q. And finally, statement three, X is not negative. So that is squiggly Q. And X is not greater than zero. So that's squiggly P. Now, just as was mentioned, if you're on the test and I ask you to do something like this, or if you're on the homework and, and now I'm hoping you use the homework as the opportunity to remember these things, but on the test, if you blank, you could do this problem with a nice truth table, a large truth table, like we just did with the contrapositive and inverse and converse. Okay, but what I wanna use is I just want to get familiar with our equivalences. So here's what I would like you to do. Up here at the top, I'd like you to write down what that top statement is equivalent to if we used De Morgan's law. That's gonna help us identify what's going on here with these different statements. Now you might be saying, hey, Perkster, why are you doing that? Well, how did you know to start that way? It would be a fantastic question if that's what you're thinking. The reason I'm doing this is because notice none of the other statements that we drew here have parentheses, right? So I wanna get this top statement that I was given in a format that looks like these other ones, okay? That's why I'm starting here. So when I use De Morgan's law, De Morgan's law says when I distribute the squiggly, what's my first term going to be? Okay, negative P, squiggly P. What's the symbol between them going to be? A, a flip it down, a disjunction, an or, whatever you said there is fantastic. And then what's the second term going to be? Squiggly Q, okay. Well, before we go any further, let's see, does that match perfectly with any of the statements? So squiggly P or squiggly Q, is that, is that what that looks like right there? No, that's an if then, we'll come back to that in a minute. Squiggly P or squiggly Q? Does that what that one looks like? Yes. yes, okay. So we already know that number two is equivalent, okay? Just by doing De Morgan's law. The bottom one, 
squiggly Q and squiggly P. What's the problem with statement three? Why is statement three guaranteed to not be equivalent to the given statement at the top? Yeah, sign's different. This is an and statement, right? And this is a or statement. Okay, so statement three is not equivalent. And if you need to make a note for yourself, because you're going to look at this later, and you might, I don't want you to forget, just make a note here that this is an and statement and the original is an or statement. So they can't be the same. If you remember your truth table, and and or are different. They give different values. So the last thing to do here is to determine is statement one equivalent to what we started with? Well, statement one is a if then statement. There is my equivalence to turn an if then statement into a disjunction. So here's what I would like you to do. Make your best attempt. I've left it on the board. You have it in your notes. Make your best attempt to convert statement one into a disjunction. And then we'll compare notes and we'll see if it's equivalent to what we started with. All right, when we went over the equivalence between the conditional statement, my finger's pointing at it on the board. If you're watching on video, look at your notes. When we did that equivalence, we did what to the condition? So in this case, the condition is squiggly Q. What did we do to the condition? You negated it. So what do I get when I negate or I change the sign of squiggly Q? It becomes positive Q. And then we have a disjunction. And then according to the equivalence and what I have written on the board, what do we do to the consequence? You leave it. So the consequence stays squiggly P. So again, make yourself a note. If you didn't get the first time, maybe it clicked in a little more. When you do the equivalence between a conditional statement and the disjunction, you change the sign on the condition, whatever it is, and then you leave the consequence alone. Now, is this right here, what we just got for statement one, is that equivalent to what I started with? No, why not? What's the difference? The sign on the Q is different. Okay, so statement one, also not equivalent. And if you need to make a note to yourself so that you'll remember later, just in off to the side, write the sign on Q is different. That's why. 